Good morning. It is the Feast of Pentecost today. Welcome to morning prayer. Uh, because it's Pentecost, or maybe just because I have my Holy Ghost socks on. So it seems appropriate today. I hope that you will find some way to remember what God is continuing to do through your own life and through the life of the church uh, here and throughout the world as we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. Yesterday, we were fortunate to uh, bury Fred Brown. Uh, and for those of you who know him and Lottie, please continue to keep Lottie in your prayers, as well as all of their family, and continue to keep the family of Linda Williams in your prayers as well. Her sons, Randy and Dan, uh, they retrieved Linda's body and remains uh, yesterday. And so they are planning what that, uh, that memorial and celebration of her life will look like in the weeks and months to come. Continue to keep them in your prayers. Our worship today, morning prayer, can be found in the full text bulletin at gracelynchburg.org. And it's on that landing page, and you can also go up to worship and find uh, that text and use that to guide you. You can also use the Book of Common Prayer. Morning prayer begins on page 80 after the opening sentences. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The invitatory psalm is the Jubilate, and there will be an antiphon at the beginning and the end. Alleluia, the Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Together. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. The psalm appointed for today is a part, portion of Psalm 104, verses 25 through 35, and then 37. Let's say it together. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it, 
All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared upon them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cap Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya be belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. <coughs> Excuse me. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what, we have, what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first response is Canticle 11. Canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah. Together. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the people. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. 
You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we are we're all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is Canticle 21. Canticle 21, the Te Deum. Let's say it together. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing an endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, Advocate and God, you, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. A reading from the Gospel according to John. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. And let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the events of the past weeks, uh, this has been, as you can imagine, a difficult uh, time to get words together, to speak to what is happening in the world, to speak to what God might be doing in us and in those that we love around us. There is a lot going on. 
But I first want to assure you that God is in the midst of it. When we see these passages, especially that encounter at the Feast of Pentecost with the Holy Spirit, and I call it an encounter because it was something that came almost unbidden by the recipients. It started as a rushing wind, a sound before it was anything to be experienced. It was this mounding sound coming forward. You've heard a violent wind before, I'm sure. The sound that goes past you and fills the space. A little bit like our air conditioner that just came on. But imagine being in that place, Pentecost, a mere 10 days after Jesus had ascended. The faithful have gathered for the feast at the temple, the feast of Pentecost, 50 days after Passover. And God gathers with them as well. That rushing wind becomes something else. It becomes fire. A visible presence, a lot of times throughout Scripture, of God's presence. A visible image that God is abiding in here and near. That must have been something to behold. But we have this story about this wind this blowing of God's Spirit into this place, into the world. It's not accidental, and it's also not really a contrivance that, uh, that we're talking about breath when we talk about the Holy Spirit. You know, the word for spirit was pneuma. It was related to that sense of breath, even in, in Hebrew, ruach. These words that talk about God breathing out God's self into the world. That same spirit, that same breath of God resting over the chaos of creation. Being breathed into human form to give humans life. There's one encounter in John where before Jesus ascends, he assembles his inner circle He's visiting them once again in that upper room. And he says, receive the Holy Spirit. And he breathes on them. It's important to think about the Spirit as this essential quality of life. Breath. This essential peace that we need to live and to survive. And also fire. Those tongues of fire that seemed like fire. There was no other way to describe them. So they used the first reference that they thought of. They looked like fire. Or it should remind us maybe of the burning bush. When Moses saw a bush that seemed to be on fire and yet it was not consumed. And we should also think about Jesus when he said that he was coming to baptize in spirit and fire. And we also might even think what that baptism of the Holy Spirit means throughout Scripture. When Jesus talks about being born again, being born of water and spirit. This idea of breath and spirit is one that pervades this day. It is not some casual reference to a dove alighting on the apostle's shoulder and everything being okay. But it was this force of nature that sent them out from where they were with the message that Jesus is risen. The same Jesus who was crucified is risen and the Spirit propels them forward to tell that message of what God's love looks like in the sacrifice of another person. It's hard not to see the overlap with the events around us. We have cities on fire today. We have 
people who have died before our eyes on video, not for the first time, saying, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And yet the very nature that God comes to us is in a breathing wind of fire. And if we look out at the world with theological eyes, we might start to wonder what God is up to. What is happening here? The very feast that the people had gathered in Jerusalem for, the 50 days after Passover, Pentecost 50, was a harvest festival. They were celebrating that first harvest of the grain. And yet, all of those festivals had other meanings where they were overlapped with the salvation history of God. Much like our liturgical year reminds us of God's saving actions throughout time. When we think about Easter and Christmas and the things that God has done for us. And this particular uh, festival, the Shavuot, Feast of Weeks, because it was counting the weeks after uh, after the Passover, was one where they remembered the giving of the Torah at Sinai. And you remember in that story, perhaps, that the nation of Israel were in the desert and they were newly freed after being enslaved for hundreds of years. And they were learning how to be a people a people in relationship to the God who saved them. In fact, the God who describes himself as the God who frees slaves. And when they encountered this God on this mountain, they sent Moses up, and the top of the mountain was filled with smoke and fire. Every encounter that they had with God was one of Nature turning itself outward. Of God giving God's self to protect them or to offer food for them or to provide water out of a rock. And yet, this moment when they received the law, the Torah, this moment where God breathed God's self into a covenant of relationship with those people, is the moment that they turn to again and again. This festival was about God giving God's self for God's people. And again, we think in a Christian context of the crucifixion of Jesus. Jesus, who lived among us and healed and fed us and taught us what it looks like to live with God's love, through everything that he did, and especially the full measure of giving himself to death by the state, was an example of God's continuing self-giving love for us, offering God's self. That is the nature of God's breath going out into the world, God sharing God's self with humanity and all of creation that God has made. That is the God who sets the world on fire with the Spirit. That is the God who comes with a rushing wind into the disciples who have given themselves to God. And this is not a benign assent to the fact that Jesus is God or that the Holy Spirit exists or that God is somebody that makes them feel good, but this is fire and breath and spirit that propels them into another way of being. If you were taken over by fire right now, what would your life look like? If you were taken over by an unquenchable fire that did not consume you, did not eat you away but enlightened you. 
and revealed your true self as God knows you to be, what would you do differently out in the world? What would it be? The bishop in my previous diocese, Bishop Wright in Atlanta, would often say about how the word purpose is connected to the word fire. And you can think of pyro as the same root of purpose. But that is a hint about what the fire and the breath of the Holy Spirit does for us. It grounds us in the purpose that God has called us to. That our very selves, when we come to be in full relationship with God through Jesus, that our very selves are turned over to that model that we learn from Jesus, this model of self-giving love, of pouring out ourselves for others. Not just in blind sacrifice, but with a purpose for accomplishing God's kingdom on earth. Accomplishing God's sense of justice among our fellow humans. And when we see the world burning, I wonder if it's enough to make us wonder what God is up to. Or maybe it makes us wish that things would just stay a little calm a little less rocky. And I get that. For a lot of us, our lives have been turned upside down and we want some stability. Maybe we haven't had that in all our life. Maybe we haven't had it in a few weeks. But frankly, for some of our brothers and sisters, they have not had that security and that stability for their entire existence. For some of our brothers and sisters, Going back to the way things were or calming things down means going back to a world where putting a knee on someone's neck is something that doesn't get seen and noticed and doesn't get called out. And maybe, as we know that it probably is, is the norm for a lot of people. And as you may know deep down, and as I'm going to tell you now, that is not God's desire for anyone anyone. All of us bear the image of God. And that fire is coming for all of us. May it change us into what God wants us to be. May it change us into a people who know God's love. A love that sometimes turns to fire. Amen. Today is the Feast of Pentecost, and so this is one of the four days where uh, of the year where whether or not there is a baptism in the community, that we all renew our baptismal vows. We are reminded that God baptizes us into the death and the resurrection of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. We have all been baptized into the Spirit. And this is a day where we renew those commitments to walk in a particular way that reflects that. Turning to your bulletin, or if you're in the Book of Common Prayer on page 292. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Help us, O God our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations and your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. A Collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Collect for Pentecost. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the way of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Lisa, Anita, Barbara, Phil, Bailey, Kathy, Trish, 
Jane, Brandy, Pat, Betty, Joseph, Bill, Sharon, Enid, David, Debbie, Sue, Gloria, Nancy, Jean, Harley, Mary Louise, Betty, Jean, Fred, Bill, Jean, Jerry and Glenn, Skip, Bud and Chris, Annie Bob, Barbara, Gloria. We also pray for Lottie, for Wilbur and Wanda and David and Donald. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remembering especially Fred Brown, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood, and to preach the gospel to all nations. Preserve us in your grace, that we may faithfully follow the movement of the Holy Spirit, and seek you in all things, and in all people. Amen. We continue with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, throughout all ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God who made you, knows you, and loves you be known to you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit fall freshly upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, my friends. Join us for coffee hour at 11. Thank mm -hmm. you.